This IEM contains multiple drivers with a three-way crossover and tries to achieve the Harman 2019 target. It all sounds very promising, as marketing materials usually do, but how well does it exactly perform in practice? Make sure to stick until the end to learn all its secrets. The SimCode EM6L is priced at $109, which I would consider to be in a budget range for an IEM, although some people might call it mid-range. You can share your opinion in the comments on where you believe it falls in terms of pricing. It features a glossy, black shell that's made with a high-precision 3D printing process. There are no visible imperfections or rough texture, making it impossible to tell that it was 3D printed. The IEM shell is rather small, making it a great fit for those with smaller ears. I believe that the rounded shape prevented them from falling out by increasing the contact area and thus creating a bit more friction. It has a two-pin connector and comes with a fantastic for this price range cable. It's made out of oxygen-free copper and is silver-plated. Some of you might not care about what it's made out of, but I appreciate the effort put into making sure that the entire signal path is of a high quality. It's braided as well to minimize the interference and make it look better. On the visual side, it perfectly complements the IM with its gold and black color scheme. It has great ergonomics and doesn't cause any discomfort like some cheap cables do. Neither does it tangle up easily. Overall, it stays out of the way and doesn't interrupt the listening experience. In terms of drivers, there's one dynamic driver and four balanced amateur drivers, which are controlled by a hybrid three-way crossover. The impedance of the IM is listed as 26 ohms, and the sensitivity is rather high at 119 decibels per volt. All of the drivers work together to produce a frequency response of 8 Hz to 40 kHz, which is way beyond the typical human hearing range. But that's a very good thing, especially in the lower limit. It indicates that there is either very little or virtually no low frequency rolloff. Looking at a frequency response graph, you can see that the treble and the sub bass are mostly in line with Simcot's goal of achieving the Harman 2019 in ear curve. The lower end of frequencies is lifted a little to match the target. However, in the mid bass, there is some additional energy that can be perceived as bloaty. It surely makes for some additional warmth, if you're into that, and you don't mind its muffling effect on the vocals, obscuring some of the finer details and clarity. Treble is pretty smooth in terms of peakiness, however its amplitude is not being compromised in any way, besides not extending exactly to 20 kHz, as there is the tiniest bit of slow roll-off on the very top end. Finally, we come to the sound stage, which is where things get intriguing. The EM6L can be described as having a weirdly big soundstage. A wide soundstage typically enhances the listening experience by creating a sense of spaciousness and immersion. However, we lack a bit of pinpoint precision in the placement of the instruments within the sound field. So, although it can be wide, it doesn't provide the sense of large scale which some people desire. This is usually challenging to achieve in in-ear monitors, and these ones are no exception. But what it does provide is great channel separation, which in IMs is often very good, as there is very little sound leakage from one channel to the other. You might be surprised by how much of a difference it can make. The SimGot EM6L can do one more thing pretty well. Punch. Not necessarily slam, meaning a large surface hit, but they can punch you with a concentrated and small surface type of hit. 